Brush of the Gods by Lenore Look and Milo So. Wu Daozi looked at the brush in his hand and felt the soft hairs. They tickled. Soak your brush, said the stern old monk, who was his teacher. Daozi lowered it into a little saucer of water. <gasps> he held his breath. Grind your ink, ordered the monk. Dowsy had not paid attention when their teacher showed them how. Now he watched the other children and copied as best he could. They put a few drops of water on a flat stone and rubbed their ink pebbles one way then the other. Black tears appeared between the stones. Sit up straight, urged the monk. Dowsy sat up. Hold your brush in line with your nose, said the monk. Dowsy stretched his neck so that his head floated like a moon above his brush. Then he looked straight down his nose. Press gently, said their teacher, as he showed the class how to draw a smooth stroke from left to right, making a glistening number one in Chinese on an old tortoise shell. Calligraphy is the highest of the arts, he continued, slowly writing more numbers in beautiful strokes. It reveals your character. Do it well and you will bring great honor to your family. At the tip of Dowsy's brush, a couple of worms crawled out. <gasps> What's that? asked the monk. Worms, said Dowsy. Worms? Silence. Your worms are beautiful, but you must learn your characters. So Dowsy tried again. This time blades of grass came from his brush. The other children giggled. <laughs> you must try harder, said the monk. Concentration folded Dowsy's body into a tight little fan. Then, with a flick of his wrist, a straight line dropped out like the back of a robe. Then curved and squiggles and fell into a hem. I love calligraphy, he cried. <sighs> That's not calligraphy, the monk said. Each day something new and surprising dripped out of Dowsy's brush. His straight lines splintered into trees, his hooks caught fish, his dots burst into eyes, then pigs and monkeys. From a stroke a horse's tail flew by. The boy drew on walls everywhere, at temples, tea houses and the silk bazaar. He even drew on the big walls surrounding the city. Dancing peonies, flying Buddhas sewn into the sky, clouds stitched around them. All who saw were amazed. <gasps> Exquisite, said a lady in a sedan chair. It's a gift, said a nun, bowing low. He has flying sleeves, said a boy with a kite. Indeed. Dowsy painted so fast that his sleeves looked like wings spread in flight. Admirers began to leave coins for the painter they now called flying sleeves, bowls of rice, fruit, even a chicken. Dowsy ran to the monastery with their gifts to feed the poor. The monks were very pleased. Every day Dowsy painted to his heart's content with one eye wide open the other in a dream. He painted so much that he knew not whether the sun was up or down or whether he was standing or sitting. Seasons passed. The more Dowsy painted, the better he got until one day he painted a butterfly so exquisite and delicate that he couldn't take his eyes off it. The longer he admired it, the more real it looked. <gasps> then a wing moved, just a little, when the wind blew. What? 
said Dowsy. He leaned closer and suddenly the butterfly rose and floated away like a burnt paper above a fire. Ay yeah! the painter exclaimed. I must have only imagined I painted it when in fact a real butterfly had landed there. Quickly, Dowsy painted another. This time, it was a butterfly he knew by name, the Majestic Leopard Lacewing. Its wings glistened in the afternoon light. The boy blinked. The butterfly winked. Before Dowsy could cup his hand around his beautiful creation, it soared away. Come back, he shouted. You belong in my painting. But butterflies don't listen. Quickly, Dowsy painted a camel and ran to tell the monks. When they returned, it too was gone. My painted camels are so real they can walk away, cried Dowsy. The monks shook their head. It is better to paint than boast, said one. That day, no one left rice or money for Dowsy. The great city wall was bare, though people could hear his brush slapping and sweeping against the bricks. Dowsy's birds fluttered away, his horses galloped into the mountains, even his carriages rolled down the street and straight out of town. All that he painted disappeared. Dowsy wept, his admirers also vanished, all except the children. His pigeon landed on my head, one beggar child cried. I can chirp along with his crickets, marvelled another. Chirp, chirp, chirp. The children followed Dowsy everywhere, tattered and shoeless. They formed a hedge around their friend. As long as he painted, they forgot their hunger. Years passed. The crowds grew. The children brought their own children to marvel at Dowsy's works. Inside the central gate of the Temple of Renewed Virtue, people came rushing in when he painted the halo on a Buddha. They gasped when his brush swept with the force and brilliance of a comet. In the inner hall, Dowsy painted five dragons whose scaly armour moved in flight. In temples throughout the city, waterfalls spilled from his imagined mountainsides. Ah, someone cried, this man is no ordinary painter. He holds the brush of the gods. One day the emperor himself came. Upon seeing the five dragons, he drew his sword. At the peonies he bent and sniffed. From the gushing water he drank. Master Wu, the emperor finally said, I shall give you an entire wall of the palace on which to paint a grand masterpiece. No one may see it until you are done. It was the greatest honour Dowsy could imagine. He bowed deeply. But a masterpiece takes many years to create. By the time the mural was finished, the great artist had grown old. At last the royal unveiling ceremony began. An orchestra of 700 instruments played. When the drapery was pulled away, mountains pierced holes into the sky. Bamboo swayed, birds flew, horses galloped in the distance. There were 9,999 things to behold. The painting was as brilliant as fresh fallen snow. The crowd fell silent. The emperor bowed. The moon wept. Drenched in the moon's silver tears, the master painter added a shimmering archway and cried out in a loud voice, It is paradise! Follow me! And before anyone could move, the man with the brush of the gods walked straight into his painting and disappeared. <laughs>